you grew up in a church where you say, yeah, money is coming to you in the name of Jesus. Ah, prosperity, barrenness I remove. You have problems with us. Who will teach you first? Oh, you fail college, you fail primary, you fail secondary, you fail high school. You want to fail church again? No, who will teach you here? This one you will succeed. This one you will pass. You will graduate on this one. I'm telling you, you will graduate. After the completion of this message, you now see what a prophet is in your life. Immediately you realize the things you were missing. Are you here? Tend your neighbor say prophets. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. So rescue, divine rescue comes by the hands of the prophets. So prophets are entities that are used by God whenever he wants to rescue his people. It is so profound to note that every time there was chaos, God sent a prophet. He did not send an evangelist. So my message will be very, very quick. But you will get it. I will demonstrate it. Because the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, it is not in weight only, but in the demonstration of power. The kingdom of God is not in weight only, but in the demonstration of power. Let me warn you. Lack of power is absolute proof God is not there. Presence of power is not absolute proof God is there. But lack of it is 100% proof God is not present. Prophets are a threat and they are a trap. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God. But the prophet is a snare of a fowler in all his ways and hatred in the house of his God. In a few minutes you will get it. I want you to understand today what the use of a prophet is. And when you see him next time, or the next minute after I finish, the following minute after the completion of this message, you now see what a prophet is in your life. Immediately you realize the things you were missing. I want you to appropriate everything to your life. If you're hearing me, if you're not hearing me, those of you online can say amen better than you people. Ah, Jepakush Kata. Hosea 9 verse number 8. Sit down, sit down. Now, the prophet is trapped every minute. The moment I say it, God, I accept the plan to be a minister. All the witches, wizards, warlocks were threatened immediately. The people that were fighting you were threatened. The drought that was on you, threatened. The powers. Your problem is when you see a prophet, you see a preacher. This is why when I greet some people say, Pastor, Pastor, I have no anointing of a pastor on me. I tried it. I have nothing, zero. I, I accept. I lack them. No inch, no even drop of action of a pastor. It's not. I ah, that's, that's Pastor Aiken here. I, I admire pastors. I have nothing in me. Nothing, zero. When I see a pastor, I say, What a man of God. I have no patience for it. I have no desire for it. I have no time for it. I don't even have the action to help me overcome all the haters, pastors. Overcome. I have nothing, zero. There's nothing in me. I'm completely a prophet and a teacher. That's it. 100 percent That's it. 
That's why I don't do counseling. Why would you, what would I be doing when I meet you? Listening to a story I already know you're going to tell me. Before you come, while is I'm meeting number five, number nine, I already know what they are going to come and say. That's why when people meet me, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless him. He said, go, go, you're okay. They're like, oh, you know, man of God, I had, um... I'm like, yeah, no. I'm not interested in any counseling. Anyway, listen to this. Are you here? Just listen, I wish you could just listen. I wish I had people here who would just listen. It's going to be very, very short and very, very fast. Now hear this. So, from Britain, I get through the immigration nicely, of course, because since you're British, they don't give you any problem. You get in there, my first class ticket is working because I don't have to queue. I just have to go. My son, who is American, is queuing because he's in the economy. We got in, he put me in the first class, he helped me with the guys, they helped me out. And my bags are set, and I sit down in the first class. And they made their way to the economy. Life was different. Life is different in the economy and in the first class. In the middle there is business, so imagine the gulf. There is a gulf between us and those that are there. The situation only changed when we go to America. I was the first one to get out since I've been. When I approached the immigration, I saw a man stand there and say, American citizens, come this side. Now, immediately, my first class ticket lost power. You see, today is not for anyone with any special gift. As long as you are counted in Mount Zion, your miracle is coming. It doesn't matter whether you are first class spiritually, business class spiritually, your miracle is coming. You don't have to have special gifts for this to happen. Divine Rescue Sunday is for you. All over the world as you watch me right now, Something big is taking place. Whatever you are packing outside, dream for another thing. Whatever you live in, you are now sent to another location in the name of Jesus. I speak by the authority of the Spirit. New levels. New levels. New levels. New levels are rising. New people are rising. Divine rescue is yours. You see, when we, when we come like this, sit down. When we come like this and we begin to decree and declare, your problem is if you are too used to too many pastors who have declared before, and it became a church service. I don't do church services. I don't have order. I have all, all kind of disorder. Have you noticed you thought the service was going to start like this? Even me, I get confused. I'm trying to read something there and God said, go there. As I move around, you see, I will move from that one to that one. Because when I hear God, I follow what He says. I'm one man who is holding the powers of God to know what He likes, what He thinks. In any service, I go by the Spirit. That's why I can't be controlled. I don't preach by invitation. I preach by commandment. I prophesy also by commandment. Even if you look at me in some kind of way, I will never come to you. I only come to you if God says, Go for in the name of Jesus, somebody get it located. But what I know about this service, every one of you will live here with a change. By a prophet, they were delivered. When they came out of Egypt, the Bible says by a prophet, they were rescued. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It takes a prophet to deliver you. Deliverance is not rolling on the floor.
Deliverance happens when your ignorance is confronted. And prophets are careers of secrets, careers of wisdom, hidden wisdom, hidden manner from heaven, ancient wisdom from heaven, that when they give it to you, you are delivered. Fast, you are delivered. Benefits of a prophet in your life. So you see, I could tell they don't get it. Because your idea of a prophet is somebody who gives me my future. The prophetic according to God is not the future revealed. It is the past revealed. You can get this. The prophetic is the past revealed. In other words, God has already reached the end of this thing. And has already seen it. So for God, it is past tense. So when I come to you, I'm actually revealing your past that you have not gotten into. Now, nah, yeah, you didn't get that. So you can never be killed until you fulfill your purpose. Yet, names await him on all his path. My God. And was still it in the house of God. In other words, the prophet is elected in the house of God. So the prophet is a threat and a trap. He is not the loved one. He is the one everyone is setting a trap for. And the Bible says, so, so, if you want to see a prophet, look for the one who is hated the most. I can assure you, if they don't have any scandal or accusation of anything, they are not a prophet. They are lying. Because according to the Bible, there is a snare set a trap for them. <laughs> Even those that set traps and they don't catch them, they don't catch the prophets, they will rise up and say, Yeah, you did this, you did this. Because their traps did not work. So a prophet is not a celebrity. He is not the one they like, he is the persecuted one. I know you're not getting me at all. Jeremiah 20 verse number 7 fast 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 quickly because of time I want to tell you the truth a prophet the moment you get a prophet you have met a person who they trip oh Lord oh Lord thou deceived me, me and I was deceived <laughs> for that for for that stronger, than than stronger than I and you prevailed I am, I am in derision daily. See? A prophet, a prophet is the one they dreams and dreams for. They set, they set names for a prophet. So you want to follow a prophet? Notice one thing. If you want to follow a prophet, you look for the man that they are setting dreams for. Do you know how I saw T.P. Joshua first time? The prophet called T.P. Joshua way back. And I understand. Most men of God with no power. Zero power. I'm talking about they don't do nothing except talk. Yet the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in the demonstration of power. Have you seen some of our American brothers who preach? It's only the eloquence of preaching. There is no healing. There is no deliverance. There is no raw power operating in their churches. But if you listen, you say, oh, what a preacher. But if you come to you, the angels ministry, you say, oh, what a Jesus. Why? Power. It is when you meet power, you say, what a Jesus. But if you meet eloquence of speech, you say, what a preacher. The Bible says, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence of words. But with what? Demonstration. Brother, demonstration. Brother, demonstration. Sister, demonstration. I speak to somebody under the influence of this prophet's voice. By divine rescue, they shall know you touch the prophetic. Now, sit down. Do you want to 
was saying that when the prophet began to prophesy in the New Testament, before the New Testament came, and you see, there were prophets who were staying in the temple. You know what the Bible says? It says, for this child, oh, look, the book of Luke, chapter number 2. Luke, chapter number 2. Maraka subiena kukt at keba. Verse number 34. Luke, chapter number 2, verse number 34. Prophets are dangerous to all. Beneficial to be close to. I said beneficial to be close to. Notice what the Bible says. God will do nothing. How many things sir? How many things ma'am? He will do what? Nothing. Unless he reveals it to his servants the prophet. Nothing. It is very dangerous to be in a congregation with no prophet. According to God, I do nothing. How can you, how stupid can you get? I know there's no prophet, but we just came. God says, I don't do anything when there is no prophet. <laughs> uh, you see, you see, I don't. I, let me help these people here. Because some people are angry here. I, think, I don't know what church you came from. But. You sit down and say, imagine you, you hear that uh, the room you're about to enter is no oxygen. You say, ah, we don't know how you just enter, you know. Uh, when you die in there, don't complain. You were warned before. God will do how many things? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Unless you reveal us. Some of you are so bad at thinking that if Jesus walks down here, comes down here, down the street, walking down the street, and says, hey, brother, I'm just cutting my church down the street. Like, no problem. You pass by Jesus' church and say, we are going to worship you in the next one. Because in your head, we were born, I was born in that church. You were never born there. The only place where I've seen people born in is spirit them as well. We have videos where ladies, 10 months, right? 11 months pregnant are giving birth in church at my command. So that is the only person who can claim I was born in church. Not you. I was born in the Roman Catholic Church. I can't, I can't leave. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. I decree and declare, I decree in, the name and declare in the name of Jesus. This voice that is speaking to you as a prophet you are now under 24 hour, seven days prophetic surveillance. Forget CCTV. There is a better one. It's called a prophetic TV. Prophetic cameras are on you on a daily basis. Sit down. Are you flowing or you've gone home? Let's go to Jeremiah. We are still here. A prophet is a what? Is a threat. Hmm. When Jeremiah, hear this. Everyone mock at me. Eight. For since I speak, I cry out violence and spoil because the word of God was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. He even decided, I'm not mentioning anything about this man. This God, no, I'm not mentioned. I'm tired. Everyone mocks me. Jeremiah got to a point where he says, You deceived me, and I was deceived. Ah. <laughs> See, this is the problem with people. They want to be prophets fast. You like the spotlight, but can you endure the fire that produces the spotlight? Can you endure the heat that will produce the spotlight? There are places where you just say to yourself, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I remember one of my brothers, I went to him, he was a very reasonable guy. And I said, You have a demon, I need to remove it. My own brother. He said, Man. And he said, oh, okay. Then I read a scripture to help him about demons that if a demon comes into a place and it is removed it goes out to look for eight more that are stronger than it is and then they come in and they get 
get him. And the latter state of that man will be worse than the former. My brother said, uh, Prophet, not my brother. This verse says, if you remove this thing, it will go and look for more. I think I am okay with one. I understood him. His reasoning was pure. Why do you want to remove one? Then I will end up with eight. That are more dangerous than the one I'm using now. Listen to me. Somebody under the influence of my voice. By this prophetic hand. You will cause everything in your house to prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, some of us are in ancient church. Some of these churches, we are ancient church. Wherever you are, it might be Atlanta, it might be DC, it might be in Venezuela, Puerto Rico. We have branches everywhere. Hear this. These places we are in, these locations we are in, they are under prophetic action. I might not be in this room, but they are under prophetic action. <sighs> and all of the branches we are setting up here, I have laid hands on the pastors. So they are able to prophesy. They are able to give words of knowledge. They are able to deliver. We are a prophetic church. Sit down. Sit down. Some people are saying, sit down. But how, how prophet, how are you going to do it? There are so many ways, but I'll tell you only one. The words, the, Jesus said, the words I speak are they are spirit and they are life. The word life there is the word so way. But the word spirit is the word number. But if you look in the in the strongs concordance, for those who like learning, you know when you come to spirit, it's like after service you have a degree. I understand if you grew up in a church where you're like, yeah, money is coming to you in the name of Jesus. Ah, prosperity, paradise are removed. You have problems with us. Just be sitting there like the professor. We will not. We will teach you first. Oh, you fail college, you fail primary, you fail secondary, you fail high school. You want to fail church again? No, we will teach you here. This one you will succeed. This one you will pass. You will graduate on this one. I'm telling you, you will graduate. Are you here? In fact, let me leave it and just move on. You, you are. It will take time. It will take time. Every gift of God is activated by voice. Everything God offers is voice activated. Do you realize from Genesis to Revelation, God has never done anything physical? Oh, but He created the world. He said, "Let there be." Did he touch it? The only time he touched someone was when he formed. But the Bible does not say he formed by his hands or anything. It doesn't give us because the hand is a dimension of God. Okay, let me show you something. I know you 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 miss it because I, I can tell by the way you are looking at me like mm, these people are about to miss something. I'm telling you, I can really tell someone like that. What is he trying to say to us? Does he Matthew 12? I want Matthew 12, verse number 28. Luke 11, verse number 20. Read it. One, two, three. But if with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is unto you. Now, now, now. So when people see me point like this, and demons come out and say, see, that's the finger of God. No, that's not it. It's the Holy Spirit. Go to the Matthew one. Let's read the same scripture in the book of Matthew. But if I cast out devils by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So the finger of God is the Holy Spirit. So you see some people who are learned you this one. Please. Pray for this, this group here. And the back, the people are very, ah, they are like, yeah, we got it, we got it. 
you, you guys are saying this group here has been saved by those people in the back there. Of course, our online people got it way back before I even preached it. Notice here. So whenever you hear the finger of God, the hand of God, do you understand that the Bible says that this earth is a footstool of God? If this earth was a footstool of God, then we worship a very small God. You know how small the earth is? The highest mountain might be Mount Everest. Or a Mount what? Is it Mount Everest? Not Africa. My brother. Someone says Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Everyone wants a mountain to be bigger, whether they are is what? Well. Mount Everest. So if the sun, the sun, just the sun, hmm? the sun was as big as Mount Everest. And we take, listen, let's take the, the sun, reduce its size to put it in proportion to Mount Everest. Let's say it becomes Mount Everest. Do you know what the earth will look like? A golf ball. Yet the Bible says he vomited the sun out of his mouth. <laughs> so if a god who can vomit the sun out of his mouth he is bigger than mount everest then so if his foot becomes bigger then he steps on mount everest as a footstool we worship a very small god it is a dimension you hear the foot of god the back of god the hand of god the finger of god now you have just realized the finger of god is the Holy Spirit. So when you hear the foot of God, don't think. When you hear the hand of God, don't think. You're hearing. It's a dimension of God. Are you are you flowing? Lots of time. Lots of time. Sometimes it takes time. Are you getting it? From one prophetic word in Israel, you're going to sing. That's it. Someone wasn't singing. Go light it up. Oh yes. Prophets are dimensions of God. Tell your neighbor, say, prophets are dimensions of God. Prophets are dimensions of God. This is the reason why some prophets were touched and you would have touched God the moment you touch a prophet. You think you are speaking to a man, but you've already touched him. See, do you understand that the Bible says the clouds are the dust from his foot feet? Bible tells us the clouds are the dust of his feet. That means there are these clouds you see, then there are other clouds. When Moses, when somebody spoke against Moses, his own sister, his own brother spoke against Moses. Do you understand that Moses said? Moses married an Ethiopian sister. As they say, once you go black, never go back. Moses went and married a sister. From Africa, and yet God had commanded, Don't get somebody who is outside of now. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, not all, not at all. Acquit the wicked. The Lord had his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and clouds are the dust of his feet. The Bible says, as Moses took black sister Aaron and Miriam brought the scriptures to him remember this is the guy who had written the scriptures himself and they say does God speak to you only because we know what the scriptures say ah, we know what the scriptures say you wrote them you brought them to us <laughs> are, you, are you following says you brought them to us so we know what the scriptures are saying are you getting it then then moses said you see yeah, I, I understand i brought them to you the bible says he descended writing on clouds he had no time to bath <laughs> just from his feet footprint he, from his feet he wrote the dust came down Addresses was never the sin of Moses. He addresses authority. 
were you not afraid to speak to a man I speak to face to face were you not afraid do you understand what I'm talking about huh. some people are getting it prophets are dimensions when I say a dimension see if I extend my hand like this and you touch my finger you try to pinch it I feel it that's what prophets are the moment they feel something God feels it and do you know what sons are they are an extension of the father do you know what daughters are they are an extension of the father do you know what you are you are an extension of the prophet whosoever touches you has touched God I don't have time so I'm trying by all means so I would rather call it part one and we will get back to another year <laughs> I'm telling you because next week there is supernatural debt cancellation a lot will happen physically you will see it happen in here and you wonder what how is it happening ah, you will see you will see let's go light it up oh yes light it up light it you see this thing has gone around the world oh, yes. bbc right extra yes. everywhere sir. they are playing it in the pub oh yes people okay. are getting yes. delivered yes. it's amazing it how is. It is. from one prophetic word in israel you're going to sing that's it someone who wasn't singing dealing with their own medical career yeah. and they took that word and look at what the world is doing they are responding Sometimes I feel something. It is a dimension to the point that even if you look at Paul, when Eli was the sorcerer, Eli was the sorcerer. You know, there was a sorcerer in which was this. He had power with the kings and governors, and he opposed Paul. And Paul said to him, "You will be blind for a season. Imagine checking the ability of somebody to see by words, and even giving a timeline." That is only for a season until I speak. <laughs> Look at the prophet alive. What happened? He said there is no rain until at my a man came to my ministry. He was sitting there and he spoke some nonsense. You know, people who think they are wise. I said, Sir, I got it just to keep quiet. I said, yes, I'm not going to answer him. But you will get into a problem in two months' time. And I said, within 58 days, you will be into a deep problem and the only person who can solve it will be me. I saw him in churches. In churches, on TV life, trying to find deliverance. Until you came. One guy came to my ministry and said, Prophet, this man touched me and I'm your child. Sold me a land that he had already land that he had already sold to someone, double sale. It happens in every country, even in America. I said, Don't worry, sir. You just go to your work. He was working at a mine. I said, Because you are connected to me. He took that word and look at what the world is doing. They are responding. Let's go light it up. Oh, yes. Light it up, light it. You see. This thing has gone around the world. Oh, yes. BBC right Extra. Yes. Everywhere, sir. They are playing it in the pub. Oh, yes. People okay. are getting yes. delivered. Okay. It's amazing it how, is. It is. from one prophetic word in Israel, oh, yes. you're going to sing. That's it. Someone who wasn't singing, dealing with their own medical career, yes. 
and they took that word and look at what the world is doing they are responding Money, money, it's a fun bad man. Got no semi.